So uh, there is a shocking video. Disturbing. Uh, really disturbing. A YouTuber named Brooke House is currently under investigation by the LAPD for abusing her dog on video. Hi, I'm Katie Bang. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a video I'm actually very excited to make. I'm not excited on the terms that I have to make this video, but it is about Dobermans, which is something I'm super passionate about, and it's about dogs, which you just heard mine. I'm going to go let him in, and I'll be back. Here's my Doberman. She does not want to kiss me. Hi, baby girl. This video is about a girl named Brooke Houts. She has a Doberman, and a lot of her Doberman videos have been doing very well on her channel. Me personally loving Dobermans and owning Dobermans, in the past I've looked on to her videos and seen that she was a very passionate, positive reinforcement based like person with her dog. She wanted everything to be positive reinforcement and she seemed pretty passionate about no corrections, which is something that I personally completely disagree with. I love positive reinforcement, but I studying dog psychology and owning my own dog training business know that positive reinforcement does have its limitations, especially with the more challenging breeds, including Dobermans. Dobermans are a very challenging breed if you don't know what they're doing or what you're doing, but Dobermans are my favorite breed. I will always own a Doberman. I say this in every video. My kids will all have their own Dobermans. They're my favorite breed by far. It is the only breed that I have committed to owning for the rest of my life. Australian Shepherds, my favorite dog is my Australian Shepherd, and I'm not even 100% sold on owning him forever. <laughs> or not owning him forever, but owning Australian Shepherds forever. I messed that up. I'm gonna own Oxer. Forever, he's my favorite. Show Ox right here. Hi, little buddy, I love you. A video came out, and this makes me so sad. Um, she was beating up and spitting on her dog. Um, I'll put a little bit of the video in this video just so you can see, but I do want to say a little bit of a trigger warning just because, to me, loving dogs, it's hard to watch. Hey everyone, it's your girl Brooke here today. For this video, I wanted to prank my She's over there. I put plastic wrap on the door. I'm gonna have him run out. We're just gonna see what he does. I don't know. It doesn't phase you. Well, as you can tell. Stop! We love you. We love you or whatever. We love you. So I really want to break down what happened. Her intention, I believe, from watching the video was to correct her dog, but I do not believe that she established how to properly correct a dog before this or what a correction means and how to give a correction before she attempted to correct her dog for jumping on her. She got very intense, which escalated the situation. Her dog thought that they were playing and Dobermans are a very high strung breed. So the Doberman kept feeding into it and getting more intense following the owner's behavior and she just kept getting more frustrated which it's kind of a vicious cycle because she's trying to calm the dog calm the dog down by yelling and being really intense and then the dog's feeding off of her and getting more intense and frustrating her more so I'm just watching this and I'm like oh no but I want to break down exactly what happened I want to talk about how to properly correct your dog I want to explain that Dobermans are not a dog for everyone. They can be a little bit more challenging. Like I said, they are high strung and they feed off their owner's energy so much. And then I also think this is a really good way to just talk about the limitations that positive reinforcement has and how positive reinforcement training played into this. And I think positive reinforcement sounds so good, but if we really break it down, it's interesting to see how the positive reinforcement training could have played into this and made this situation occur. The first thing I wanna say is that dogs are extremely environmental. With my dogs, I teach them that there's not allowed to be any play in my house because since dogs are so environmental, if they practice playing in the house, they practice being excited. And excitement leads to disregard of the rules that you establish as a dog owner and a dog parent. So I always say you guys can play outside when I allow your energy to be a little bit higher, but make sure that inside my house, the rules are no playing, no energy, or like excitement over a level five out of 10. I like to keep it very calm in my household because I own a lot of dogs. I do board and train, so I'm bringing new dogs in all the time. 
and dogs are like three-year-olds. They can't tell good excitement from bad excitement, so the excitement that they are using when they're playing and happy is practicing the same state of mind as if they were to fight another dog or to disregard the rules. So I always keep it very structured. I do not like any excitement when my dogs are in my house. and. I'm at the point where I've owned dogs and I train dogs for quite some time so if I do want to amp up their energy a little bit I will but I'll always do my homework after to make sure that they're settled down that their state of mind is settled down and they're back in a cooperative state of mind listening to me in the specific video that Brooke hurt her dog and spit on her dog um, she was doing a prank on her dog where she was making her dog or attempting to make her dog run through saran wrap and put it on the door so pranking a dog, I don't really get with. I don't think it's that entertaining, but I could see how if you're filming a video, you're like, oh, this might get a lot of traction. So she's pranking her dog and she's chasing her dog around the house. She's really like roughhousing, going like blah, 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 blah to her dog. And her dog is feeding off of it because dogs are followers. They're not leaders or they're leaders. They're not followers. So if you have a good dynamic with your dog, your dog's in the follower position, you're in the leader position. If it's the other way around, your dog's in the leader position, you're in the follower position, and there's no in between. Dogs are leaders or followers, and essentially dogs were made to be followers. You're not gonna have a healthy relationship with your dog unless they're in the follower mindset. So what happened here is after practicing all this stuff to try to get the prank, she's chasing her dog around the house, and the Doberman is doing what it thinks is right and fe feeding the energy back to her. So essentially what's happening is she is intensifying her energy and the Doberman's following that and already being a high strung breed is starting to go after her in a playful manner. The Doberman's not trying to do anything wrong. He's just using and doing the best he can with Brooke's guidance in that point in time. So like I said before, when you're encouraging a state of mind, dogs can't tell good excitement from bad excitement. So you're teaching them to be in this excitable state of mind, which is teaching them, yes, they're doing the sit, the down, the stay, but they're not learning how to calmly get encouraged. They learn that they get excited and then they get encouraged for being excited. When you're working with any animals, especially a dog, and especially a dog that is already very high strung and high excitement naturally, what you wanna do is you wanna only reward them and calmly pet them and encourage them when they're practicing being calm. What I saw from Brooke in a lot of the videos is that she was really encouraging this very like high strung dynamic between her and her dog. And I, I personally didn't see after the videos, but it seemed like this was a dynamic that she encouraged for the videos to be exciting and fun and for the dog to run around so that it would be interesting to watch. Like, oh my gosh, what's the dog doing? He's so playful. But what this does is this teaches the dog that you want them to be excited. And when you're teaching the dog that you want them to be excited, you're pretty much setting the ground rules of, I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to be excited at all points in time. So unfortunately, she didn't mean any harm, but she was setting herself up for this by teaching her dog to be excitable and not know what boundaries are. Now, when you're taking the initiative to correct your dog, I think it is 100% dog abuse if you do not do your homework before because a lot of people are so positive reinforcement based and I 100% agree with that and understand that if we're correcting dogs by beating them. Beating your dog is not acceptable. Correcting your dog when your dog has no idea what the expectation of the correction is, is absolutely not acceptable and that is 100% dog abuse. To properly do a correction with a dog, what you have to do is establish the state of mind you want to correct them into before you ever use a correction. I do this by mastering the walk. I always talk about mastering the walk. I start doing a walk with pressure and release. What this does is it teaches a dog to heal and calm their state of mind down every single time you put pressure on the leash and walk with no tension. This sets you up every single day. You have 30 minutes to an hour or two hours, however long you walk your dog for, for your dog to practice being in a follower state of mind. If you don't do this, your dog doesn't understand Dress. Your dog doesn't understand the expectation of them going into a follower calm state of mind. And I know I say talk a lot about the state of mind. What I mean by a calm state of mind is when your dog's in a state where they're calm and they're willing to listen to you no matter what and you have control over their mindset. So when you are walking with pressure and release, you are setting yourself up for your dog to be calm and cooperative. When you are walking with a prong collar on at the bottom of your dog's neck or a slip lead at the bottom of your dog's neck and your dog's dragging you all around and is excited and looking at distractions, you're setting yourself up for your dog to be distracted and not understand what you mean when you tell your dog to settle down. Why I think it's so important to walk your dog in this way is so that your dog learns 
not only to be calm and cooperative in a high distraction environment, but also your dog, this will translate to when the, your dog's at home. And when you give a correction or you tell your dog to settle down, they understand the expectation of this is how they're expected to act and this is how you want them to act. There's pressure and release on the leash and this translates to all different types of pressure and release. A huge thing with pressure and release that I use with my dogs, especially big ones, is spatial pressure. So when I tell Jazzy to scoot and I walk into her space, she scoots right away. With Brooke Houts, you could tell that her dog did not respect her space. And a dog's space is respect. If they give you space, it means they respect you. If they don't give you space, it means they don't respect you. If you don't give them space, it means you don't respect them. So with dogs, the ground rule, and I tell it to all my clients, space is respect and that's the end of it. So it's really important that you really demand space from your dog and you're you make sure they're comfortable giving you space and knowing if you walk into their space they need to give you more space just to set up a good pack dynamic especially if you're owning more than one dog but if you have just one dog they can't really interact with each other in the pack dynamic so it's really crucial that you're giving that and fulfilling their need for a pack dynamic as well I want to show you exactly what I mean by pressure and release on the leash and spatial pressure so really quick all I'm gonna show you is basic pressure and release on a leash so what that means is I'm gonna pull up slightly with one finger and she's going to heel by my side. What this does is it teaches her that if I put any pressure on her or make her uncomfortable at all, that she needs to modify her behavior, calm her state of mind down, and heal. Yep. Good. So this is putting her in a follower position. Good. Two things I want to point out really quick are one, when I pet her a little bit, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a slight excitement she got just because she is a Doberman, and like I said, they're super high strung breeds. So that excited her to the point just praising her a little bit, and that's why I just walked right on forward when she started to get a little bit more excitement. But also she's looking at me, she's willing to follow me. Yes, she's a little bit excited because she skipped her walk this morning, but you can tell that this is setting her up for success the rest of the day. So what I mean by spatial pressure is this. See how she's standing there? I'm gonna ask her to move by just walking into her space. Move. Jazzy, lay down. Jazzy, lay down. Good. So she knows exactly what I'm asking for. And if she's hyped up, I'm just gonna ask her to scoot over. Boxer, stop. I'm just gonna ask her to scoot over so that she can give herself some more space and show, just remind her that she respects me. And I'm also going to give her something to do, like lay down and wait there. When Dobermans are getting worked up, if you tell them no, they usually tend to get a little bit more high strung and amped up just because Dobermans are such a working breed. So if you really just hone in on the fact that they're a working breed, the best way to correct your Doberman is to tell them to give you more space or to give them a job to do. And what I mean by giving them a job to do is telling them to them to sit, lay down, and stay, but only after you've mastered sit, lay down, and stay. So it's really important that you kind of are really proactive with everything so that when you are correcting your dog, they know exactly what they need to do. All in all, I think this was a super sad situation, but I am so not excited. I just think the silver lining in it is that this starts a conversation about Dobermans, and personally, I love them. They're my favorite breed, but when you are not experienced, you do have to budget for working with a trainer that knows exactly how to work with a dog like that and you do have to do your research and I think the main thing of this conversation is how to correct a dog properly and the fact that positive reinforcement with these dogs is super great in the learning phases but you also do have to balance that out with making sure the dog knows you're in charge but in a good healthy way not just beating your dog because when you beat your dog your dog has no idea what they're getting beat up for and it's our responsibility as dog parents or to ensure that they know the expectation and what you're asking of them and you're not just spitting on them senseless trying to get a result when you haven't done the work. Sorry, I'm staring at Jazzy. Well, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it and I hope that this gave you some insight. I will, I respond to every comment. I will be responding in the comments below. Please let me know what you think. And yeah, I love you so much and I will see you next video. Bye. Her ears are back because she's like, what do you want me to do? Can you either like be in the shot or like get out? Girlfriend. Okay, lay down. Do you see your nose? With positive re Really?
Bridget. Out. Out, B. Taquito. Come here. All my animals. All my animals, man. Are you trying to play? TT? Not, not the time. Jazzy? You, you wanna just, you wanna nap? She's like, it's nap time and you're trying to film, no thanks. Bridget, you better move. Bridget, move. And that's the matter of her. I get distracted with my dogs. I love my dogs so much. She was just doing the best it could. Oxer. I'm not playing fetch right now.